Okay, uh, today we're going to take a look at this uh, ProLite 7.5 DSP amplifier that we're starting to sell. And I want to walk you through the, um, the menus for the DSP. It's not the most intuitive thing, but you'll get it. It's, um, it's not too hard. Um, first, let's just take a look at the controls. Um, over here we've got the two volume controls with the LED ladder, the pretty familiar, and then of course the little screen, and then a knob next to it that's labeled push to select, but you can push it and you can turn it. We'll talk more about that later. One really important thing, these two pots here, the two volume controls, they look like volume controls and they function like volume controls, but they're not conventional pots. These are actually controllers for the software. So that means that the position of the indicator really means nothing. Um, so if you see them and they're turned, you know, straight up or straight down or at three o'clock, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, in fact, the internally the software could be set up so that they're the same, but the pointers could be pointing in opposite directions. So that's one thing to keep in mind as we uh, as we use this amp. So I'd like to start by just taking a look at the software, and I'm going to start at the what the the highest level, and think of this kind of like the the pop down menus at the top of a computer program. Um, and the way you get to those is you turn the uh, push to select knob you turn it, you don't push it, uh, you can rotate it either way and you can scroll through this this list of um, sort of top level software options. Now the best way to use this video is for you to get to an amplifier and sort of go along uh, with me on this. Um, so if you uh, have an amp with you go ahead and turn it on and what I'm going to do is sort of animate this because it's just too hard to try to capture it on this tiny little screen. So this symbol means turn and when it flashes it's turned this symbol means push and when it flashes that means i've i've pushed the knob okay so let's um let's walk through the uh the top level menu choices for the amp when you turn it on and it goes through its warm-up phase you'll see it comes up to uh mode and of course the left hand of this of this little split screen is the active side okay so the first thing we see is mode then we see volume, crossover, XVR, then EQ, then delay, then limiter, and then memory user and lock. Okay, and you can scroll back and forth through these in either direction as long as you don't push the knob. So get used to that. Okay, so you've gotten used to scrolling back and forth. Now, there are some general rules about how the software operates. And of course, every general set of rules has exceptions. So let's look at one of those exceptions first. The general rule is that if you turn off the amplifier before you save the settings, you're gonna lose them. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Who asked you? Okay, if you don't save it, it's gone. But the exception to the rule is the volume control. So let's try this experiment. Let's turn on the amp and after it goes through its warm-up cycle just grab one of the volume controls and turn it slightly. You'll see that it takes you immediately to the volume control window. So let's just set them at zero or pick a number, doesn't matter. Set them anywhere. Now turn off the amp, bring it back up and if you just take the uh, selector button and turn it maybe one click to the right, one click to the left, depends where, where it is. You'll see it'll bring up the mode and the volume window and you'll see that the volume controls are left exactly where you left them. So let's take a look at the submenus under the first one which is input mode. But if we click it once you'll see that the uh, screen changes to input mode. Now it's important to watch very carefully where the blinking cursor is. If the blinking cursor is under the eye for input mode and you turn the knob, you're going to move along the upper level menu options. If the cursor is clicking in the bottom part, then you're going to move along in the submenus. And we see that there are two options in the submenu underneath uh, input mode. There's stereo A and B input and there's mono A only input. So you pick the one you want, uh, click the button, 
which will return you to the top. Turn the knob one click uh, clockwise and you'll see uh, discard and exit where you can say, okay, forget about it. I don't want to save that. If you go one more click, it'll say save and apply. Uh, so if you want to set the amp up to stereo A and B input, for example, here's where you would say save and apply and that um, setting would be saved and applied to the amplifier and be there next time you turn it on. Okay, just to review, the structure is laid out in a linear fashion for the top level menus. You can scroll through these. To get to the lower level, or the, the next level deeper, you have to go to one of the top ones, then push the button, that'll move you down. Then you can scroll through the various options in the submenus and so forth. But to navigate back up to the top, you always have to go back up through a submenu. Okay, let's take a look at the last one, memory because that's where all of our speakers are stored. So let's see how that's constructed. It's actually four levels deep, depending how you want to count the levels. So this is what the structure looks like. To navigate to the place where you choose what loudspeakers are assigned to what channel, you have to follow this path. Uh, you click memory. It, the first one that comes up is exit without change, so it gives you a chance to get out. Then you'll see save settings, recall settings, select speaker, and here's where you can go now to a deeper level. If you click on Select Speaker, you'll see that you now get the option of changing channel A. If you click on that, you'll see you get to an even deeper level where you can either do no change, factory, which is the factory default, but if you keep going one turn after factory, then you'll see the list of Danley loudspeakers um, presented there and you have to scroll through that whole list to find the one that you want. Once you find the speaker you want, if you click on it, you'll see that it takes you to the next window which does the same thing for channel B. Of course, once you get the settings you want, don't forget to hit save and apply, otherwise you're going to lose them. Okay, now, all of our speakers are entered into this device as if they were standalone speakers. What I mean by that is all of the high pass and low pass and so forth are set as if the speakers were going to be used alone. For example, an SH-50 has a high pass set in at 50 Hz, which is all fine and good if you're going to use the SH-50 by itself. But what if you wanted to use an SH-50, say with a TH-115? Well, the TH-115 is low pass at 80 Hz, and the SH-50 is high pass at 50 Hertz. That's probably going to be a little bit too much of an overlap. So to use these boxes together something's got to change. You're probably going to want to shift the high pass filter for the SH-50. You might want to move that up to 80. And you do that back in the XVR menu which by now you should be able to navigate pretty easy. It follows the the same kind of structure that we're now getting used to. Okay one more thing. The unit actually has four user memories, which you can get to under the memory menu item. You can give them uh, whatever name you want. And when you turn the amp on, the last user memory that was active will be, in fact, retained. Well, I hope this has been some help in getting you started using this amp. Uh, good luck with it, and thank you for your support of Danley Soundbox.